It's a real gift to do this. Jubilee is one of these things that when I learned about it, I was like, oh, why wasn't that around when I was in college? And it turns out, 40 years, I actually was, yeah, 40, yeah, I was in college then. Um, so Jubilee was around, it's just that I didn't know about it because I grew up in that other part of the country where they didn't have it. So you guys are in this super privileged position of knowing about Jubilee and being here. And what I get so fired up about with regards to Jubilee is that Jubilee talks about this full gospel story, right? And the fact that God cares about all things. Jubilee has a huge emphasis on theology. And because of our theology, that new worldview that we have, we view what's happening in the culture in a different way. And at Praxis, the work that I get to do, we, we work a lot with entrepreneurs. Entrepreneurs, um, and, and some people might think, oh, an entrepreneur is just a business person or whatever, but let me give you an expanded definition. A working definition of an entrepreneur is somebody who sees a better future and then proceeds to create it. So in other words, an entrepreneur sees brokenness in the culture because of their theology and what they believe about God and what he's doing in the world. We see brokenness in the culture different and then entrepreneurs propose different solutions. So Jubilee was actually founded by entrepreneurs 40 years ago. They saw a better future and they said college students need to know about the gospel in this way and they need to be ministered to in this way. And Jubilee was started and that's a beautiful thing. So at Praxis, we look at helping Christians that are starting ventures based on their theology that are trying to help fix something broken in the culture using entrepreneurship things that are at the intersection of those things. And what we see in the entrepreneurs and the college students that we work with are four common paths to creation. And I wanna tag off of Gabe's talk to talk about what does this look like? What might this look like? What are some visions of how we go out in the world and create new things, propose new ideas? The first is inspiration. Inspiration is a way for us to connect with God, right? This whole idea of we need to have eyes to see and ears to hear. That's a little bit about inspiration, right? Because when we see something for the first time, we're often inspired by it. Our friend Jason Ballard is the co-founder of The Treehouse. And, and Treehouse was founded after Jason was inspired with what John Mackey did at Whole Foods. And when you think about the impact of John Mackey as an entrepreneur, Whole Foods didn't just transform the grocery industry, but it also transformed agriculture, right? And getting people back to you know, organic and pesticide-free foods, right? But, but and, and that movement has shaped way more than just grocery stores and agriculture, right? It, it, organic is everywhere, right? Like somebody asked me the other day if my shoes were organic and I didn't know what that meant, so I said no. But maybe they are, right? Organic is everywhere, right? I think there's a 7-Eleven that sells organic taquitos now, right? It's everywhere and it started with Whole Foods and it brought in this movement. So Jason and his friends had this vision. They saw that home building had a lot of waste and it was really bad for the environment in a traditional way. So they started a Whole Foods version of Home Depot to contribute to the flourishing of the creation, right? Because of their theology, they were compelled to do that. How about compassion? This is my friend, uh, uh, Chris and Will Hoey. They started a toy company, but they didn't set out to start a toy company. When they were in college, they wanted to go into business and they did just that. They were working at two of the most prominent firms in America, one at Boston Consulting Group and the other one at Goldman Sachs on Wall Street. But they had gone to Honduras and they saw the brokenness that existed in Honduras. They saw people that wanted to work but there were no jobs available. Instead of Chris and Will just coming back to America and raising money from their wealthy, successful friends in these industries, they decided to leave their jobs and use their influence and in what they had learned working at these companies to create a solution. And the solution ended up being a toy company that was made out of this wood that's indigenous and unique to the region in Honduras where these jobs were deeply needed, right? Compassion compelled them. Compassion put them in touch with God, their creator, and it helped them be creative. Conviction. This is my friend Joe Baker. Joe is the founder of a company called Save the Storks, an organization called Save the Storks. Joe is super passionate about life. He saw what's happening with abortion in America and it breaks his heart, but not only abortion itself, but with the way that we engage with this issue. He saw the pro-life movement as hyper-polarizing, ultra-politicized, and even violent, right? The pro-life movement had become violent. Is that really how we should engage when we're talking about life? No. 
So they created a solution. Save the storks. This wins some brands. So you can start a conversation about pro-life by saying, hey, did you know that 57 million storks have been shot down over America since 1973? 57 million storks. There's people killing storks. What's going on, right? And it gets all those like save the whales people really fired up. Who's killing the storks, you guys? Right? So they created this winsome brand to do that. But not only that, they created these mobile units that have an ultrasound in them. It's a Mercedes-Benz Sprinter, and it's really well done, and it's welcoming, right? Leather seats and all of that. And they have an ultrasound machine in there because they found that 80%, over 80% of post-abortive mothers had never actually seen what was growing inside of them. So they parked these sprinter vans across the street from uh, abortion clinics, and they invite mothers in. So his conviction compelled him through creativity to create a new solution. He imagined a better future, and that started to come through with Save the Storks through these buses. Four out of five women that board one of those doesn't choose to abort their baby, right? That's a win. That's a win. And, and, and another common path is suffering, right? We, we don't like to talk about how suffering compels us, but, but we know that it does, because suffering helps us understand more about our God and get in touch with creativity and creative capacity that he's put inside of us. This is my friends, Ben and Laura Harrison. That's their son, Jonas, in their arms right there. Jonas was born as sort of every parent's nightmare of there's something wrong with your baby. And he's effectively blind in one of his eyes and they didn't know exactly what was wrong and they saw Jonas go through surgery after surgery after surgery. He's been through over 20 in his very short life and they still haven't figured out what to do about it. But they saw the stigma attached with, oh, that cute little kid turned into, what's wrong with your kid, right? Why does he have to wear glasses? Like, what's going on there? And they experienced that suffering and watching their kid go through this and they were compelled to start uh, to imagine a solution and they started a, an eyeglasses company. So, so kids who, you know, were sort of pointed fingers at and called four eyes, and yes, I think they still use that in elementary schools. I don't think anybody's come up with a better one. Um, but four eyes, but instead of four eyes, it's like, no, swagger dagger on 100,000 trillion because I got some sweet shades, right? <laughs> These kids walking into school styling and profiling their Jonas Paul eyewear glasses because the suffering compelled them to create a new solution. And it's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And they also give a pair of glasses away to somebody in need in another part of the world who also can't see uh, through this. So really neat thing. Uh, they've gone through immense suffering, but they've, it, it's redeeming, right? It's redeeming because of what they've been able to do to it. So we, we work with entrepreneurs and talk a lot about theology, culture, and entrepreneurship, how we can engage. And this is not just for in business, right? Uh, we need people to engage, to propose entrepreneurial solutions to problems in the social sector and education in government for sure, right? We need people proposing new ideas and new solutions in government, right? In all sectors, we need people proposing new ideas and new solutions. So even if you were thinking, oh, entrepreneurship, that was just a business thing, I wanna wipe that out and, and I wanna read this, this thing over you because I think this weekend is a really important time in your life and, and, and you guys are doing something very different than the rest of your friends and the rest of the people on your campuses this weekend. You're giving God an opportunity to transform something inside of your life that could shape and change what you decide to do with your future. And there's this great quote from a French philosopher named Jacques Ellul that I think sums up the moment that you guys are in right now, this stage of your life. And the world needs you. Millennials, the world needs you. Do not let the world tell you that you're the selfie generation and the, the Twitter quarterback. You, you are needed in the world to bring your solutions to these problems. So I'm gonna read this over you. Remember your creator during your youth, when all possibilities lie open before you and you can offer all of your strength intact for his service. The time to remember is not after you've become senile and paralyzed, because then it's not too late for your salvation, but it's too late for you to serve as the presence of God in the midst of the world and the creation. You must take sides earlier. You must take sides earlier. When you can actually make choices. When you have many paths opening at your feet and before the weight of necessity overwhelms you. Jubilee, I sincerely hope that you're open to what God is doing in your heart this weekend, that transformation, that transforming vision that will help you engage in the culture 
And you too can be a winsome witness through the work that you choose to do, through the way that you choose to use your creativity to solve problems in the world. Thank you. Thank you.